Hey guys, this video is going to be about titration calculations. This kind of continues on from my moles video, so if you'd like to check that out first, it may be beneficial as I talk about some of the formulae that are involved. So in this video, I'm going to talk about three questions. I'm going to give you worked answers and things like that. However, just to talk about the questions first of all, the first question is going to be your kind of standard titration calculation. Not too complicated, but it kind of gets you in the way of thinking um, towards these kind of questions. Uh, this is usually presented at A level, um, AS level standard for you um, British people watching. And then the second question, a uh, bit more difficult, <clears throat> but very, very similar. You're looking at different ratios of reactants and you know you meet this more in A2, but also some of the high level AS questions. And the third one, water crystallization. Uh, you can use titrations to work this out. And this you may meet at AS or A2, depending on sort of the difficulty level. But like I said, I'll take you through all three of these and how to do them. Before I do that, here are the three questions. So if you would like to stop the video and have a go on your own, feel free. The next slide is just going to give you numerical answers. If you then don't understand how to get to those answers, if you if you unfortunately couldn't do it, then you know, like I said, I'm going to go through it in the next um, next few slides. So have a read. I'm, I'm not going to read it out yet. I'll read it as I get to the questions. Okay. So if you've had a go yourself and unfortunately you, you couldn't do it, then <clears throat> I'm here to show you how. So, question one, 50 centimeters cubed of an unknown molarity of hydrochloric acid was titrated against one mole per dm cubed or one molar sodium hydroxide. What is the molar molarity of the acid if 25 centimeters cubed of the hydroxide was required to neutralize it? Okay, so with all titration questions, we're usually gonna use the formula N equals C times V over a thousand, as we're talking about number of moles here, and we have some volume and concentration. Right, first of all, what we want to do is look at the reagents and what formula is involved when we react these two. Well, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. It's an acid and a base, <clears throat> so we're gonna form water, aren't we? Simple neutralization, even says it in the question. So <clears throat> here's a formula, and this will help later on. That's always step one, that's always the first thing to write down. Like I said, step two, we're going to use N equals C times V over a thousand. So, <clears throat> and like I said, V over a thousand, which is volume in centimeters cubed. If we're doing it in centimeters cubed, that is, it would just be N equals C times V if it's in dm cubed. Okay, so we wanna highlight what we know. So we know we've got 50 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid, one mole per dm cubed of sodium hydroxide, and 25 centimeters cubed of the hydroxide was required to neutralize it. From this equation down here, we can see that we have, for sodium hydroxide, we have a C and we have a V, and a thousand is just a number, so we can work out the number of moles. So go N equals C, which is 1.00, noting the significant figures, and volume is 25.0 over a thousand, when we put that in there, we see that we have a number of moles, 0.025, not forgetting the unit of mole. Okay, so that's the first step. We now know that we have this many moles of sodium hydroxide reacting. What we want to do is work out the concentration of HCl. Well, where do we go from here? Well, that's where this equation comes into play. We can see that one molecule of sodium hydroxide reacts with one molecule of hydrochloric acid. Well, that's the same as one mole reacts with one mole. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship, one-to-one -one ratio. As it's a one-to-one -one ratio, we can state that the number of moles of HCl is the same as the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, meaning that the number of moles of hydrochloric acid is 0.025 moles as well which is perfect because we can then rearrange this first equation that we had here to get concentration, right? So if we have N equals C times V over a thousand, if we rearrange that, all we can simply do is just put the V over a thousand, bring it down to the other side, then we can say C equals N over V over a thousand. 
I mean, obviously, as it's a fraction of a fraction, you can flip and times it, it's up to you. I just always have done it this way. It's just easier than doing some more rearranging for me. So we have 0 0.025, number of moles of HCl, over 50.0. As here, it says we have 50 centimeters cubed that's being titrated, over 1,000. And when we put that in there, in the calculator, we get concentration 0 0.500 moles per dm cubed. And that's the final answer. Noting that we have three significant figures throughout. See the volume here is given to three, concentration here to three, volume here to three. So we can give the answer to three significant figures. That's how you get the answer to question one. Now guys, question two, how do we approach this one? Well, the question is as follows. 25 centimeters cubed of hydrogen peroxide was titrated against 0 0.0250 moles per dm cubed of potassium manganate. The end point was reached after the addition of 22.5 centimeters cubed of the potassium manganate. Given that equation, calculate the concentration of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so this question, very, very similar to the previous one, except we have some different ratios involved. So I'm just gonna take you through it. First of all, we'll do the same as before. N equals C times V over 1000. Why? Because we know the concentration of the manganate and we know the volume of the manganate. However, we only know the volume of the peroxide. So therefore, we can't work anything out for the peroxide at the moment as we have two unknowns in this equation. Whereas with the manganate, we have one unknown, so we can work that out. So we put the concentration in there, 0 0.0250 moles per dm cubed. Then we times it by the volume, which is 22.5 over 1,000. And when we put that in the calculator, we should get 5.625 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. So. We've now worked out how many moles of the manganate have react, has reacted. However, we want to know the peroxide. We want to know the concentration of the peroxide. As per the first question, all we have to do is look at the ratio. So we've got two moles of manganate react with five moles of hydrogen peroxide. Therefore, we can divide by two and times by five or just times by five halves. So that means as there's a two to five ratio, just times it by five halves or divide by two then times by five. And that gives you a number of moles of the hydrogen peroxide to be roughly 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3. Like I said, I haven't rounded off yet. I haven't gone to significant figures yet. Because you kind of try and keep it as exact as you can right up until the end point. Then at the end point, that's where you, you round off to your significant figures. Brilliant. So we now worked out how many moles of the peroxide we have. So we can just use the formula, formula N equals C times V over 1000 and simply rearrange for concentration. So all we have to do is divide through by V over a thousand. Like I said, you can flip and times that if you wish. It's up to you. I just find it easier to write it this way. Then you put the numbers in. So 1.40625 times 10 to the minus three, all over volume, which is up here of hydrogen peroxide, which is 25.0 over a thousand. When we put that in the calculator, we get a final concentration of 0 0.0563 moles per dm cubed. Like I said, the question's very, very similar to before. We've just got some slightly different ratios. You may meet in a higher AS level question or, or in A2 if you didn't meet it in AS. So question three. Sodium carbonate can be in its hydrated form, Na2CO3.xH2O. 0 0.120 grams of the hydrated carbonate was dissolved to make a 25 centimeter cubed solution. This solution was titrated against 0.1 molar HCl, molar is just moles per dm cubed, requiring 12.25 centimeters cubed to reach the endpoint. Calculate X given this reaction below, Na2CO3, plus 2HCl goes to 2NaCl plus CO2 plus H2O. So you may be thinking, where do we start with this? 
Whilst it's a titration, we start in the place that we always do. We work out the moles that we can, given the data above. So we use this formula again. Let's look at the data. Well, we have 0.120 grams of the carbonate, making a 25 centimeter cube solution. We have the concentration of HCl. We have the volume required. Well, the problem here is we don't know X, so you may be thinking, oh, I could use number of moles as mass over molar mass to get number of moles and we could work out the concentration that way, or the, the number of X kind of through that. Unfortunately, we can't as we don't know the MR of this. So we've got to use the titration to work out the MR and therefore we can rearrange to find X. Just a simple bit of mathematics, but I'll show you how it works. So these are this data for HCl. So we, we know the HCl data, right? So we can number of moles of HCl is 0 0.10 times by 12.25 over a thousand. You put that in your calculator, you get number of moles being 1.225 times 10 to the minus three moles. So now we know the number of moles and we can use <coughs> the reaction that you've been provided with to figure out the ratio. Well, one lot of carbonate reacts with two lots of say HCl. Now, as this is the number of moles of HCl, all we have to do is divide that by two to get the number of moles of uh, the sodium carbonate with water of crystallization. So doing that, you get the number of moles of the carbonate is 6.125 times 10 to the minus four moles. What can we then do? Well, we now know moles. We've been provided with the mass. So we have number of moles equals mass over molar mass. As you can see, there are two knowns and one unknown. So we can go molar mass is mass over number of moles. You may be thinking, why do I need to know the molar mass? Well, it's a neat little trick you can do. If we can work out the molar mass of the whole thing, we can take away what we know and we're left over with just the number of waters. Uh, I'll show you what I mean right now. So when you put mass of 0 0.120, the number of moles is 6.125 times 10 to the minus four. When you put that in, we get a molar mass of 195.9. Obviously, depending which periodic table, which value you're using, you may get a number that differs slightly, more decimal places, whole number, something like that. But you'll get to the same endpoint, hopefully. Okay, so we know the molar mass of this unknown here. The molar mass is 195.9. Well, we can we know from a periodic table what this section is, right? So we can add them up. Sodium is 23, carbon 12, oxygen 16, approximately, depending how many decimal places you want to go to. So we can say that the number of XH2O, so XH2O molecules, is equal to 195.9 minus the sodium carbonate section, which in this case equals 106, so 195.9 minus 106, and that would make 89.9. And all we can then do is we're saying we've got some lot of H2O. Well, we know the molar mass of H2O is 18, right? So how many times does this molar mass fit into that number? Well, 89.9 divided by 18 equals something like 4.995 etc etc depending if you kept your numbers whole or if you rounded it off to one decimal place in the previous section and that roughly equals five so we can say to the nearest whole number that we can fit five molecules of h2o so five times 18 will fit into this number or like i said approximately five so that means we can make the conclusion that x equals five so we have five waters of crystallization given the formula Na2CO3 dot 5H2O. So that, that was question three. 
may be a lot to process all in one go, so feel free to have another look back, slow it down, just go a step at a time, try and understand it. But I've walked you through how to do it. So it's a sim simple titration calculation, like the first one. We're using ratios and things like that to get the number of moles. Except for this time, instead of trying to work out an unknown concentration, we combine the two formulae together. So number of moles equals concentration times volume over a thousand, and number of moles equals mass over molar mass. We combi combine those two together with the ratios of the reaction, and we can work out the water crystallization. I hope that you found this video helpful. Please share it with your friends as they may find it beneficial as well. Subscribe for more and please like the video below. The more you like, the more likely I am going to um, do more videos on this kind of thing. You know, comment below if you want some more worked out examples of say titration calculation or moles or something like that. Just leave a comment below and I'll uh, try and make some when I can. Thank you.